Okay, we are um, we are going to call our regular meeting to order, um, and I was going to ask if we have additions and changes to the agenda, but I have a couple of notes here. One uh, on two items. One is an update on ARPA funds, and then uh, a, a Pelchuk letter from today. No, they sent yesterday. It yesterday. Yeah, so I wanted to add those two items. What and and I think the Pelchuk letter is just to make it so that it's in the record. Okay, so it's a quick item. Yeah. And the ARPA funds update. These are so you, these are together like five minutes. Well, and also the Ar yeah, because I want to talk about the ARPA funds when we get to the agenda item where we're looking to approve a couple more requests. Okay. So I can give an update on that then. Okay. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, the warrants are here and circulating? No, not today. I have to go back and pick them up. And then how are we going to get them signed? Well, I was going to ask the board if they would authorize me to review them as I always do and sign off on them and we'll have to leave it at the um, town office. And people have, have to stop, stop by. by. Yep. Okay. Or I can, or I can scan the signature page and send it, but that means you haven't looked at them, so I'd rather no, look at them. that's not a good idea. Uh, we okay with that? John? I wasn't paying attention. All right, so to <laughs> summarize, we don't have the warrants to sign tonight. Denise will review them in the town office and then we can each stop by to sign them. Okay. That, right. I'll just I'll send you an email when it's mm -hmm. done and ready to be done. And then obviously we all, that's our chance to each of us look at them. Right. Uh, all right, so everyone's good with that right. approach. Um, okay, so public comment for items not on the agenda. Any public comment for items not on the agenda? Okay. Um, is there, so we have several items on the um, consent <coughs> agenda. We have a series of minutes that we are uh, caught up on and ready to approve. We have a Letter to V Trans, which is uh, just a clarification on the recent Town Highway 7 uh, decision. It doesn't change anything. And then finally, uh, ratifying, this was based on the conversation at our last meeting, but ratifying a, um, Denise and Rick to um, sign a purchase order, a change order request on a new truck that we are buying. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor, please say aye. Okay, I'll send the aye. letter aye. around. Are you approving this too? Yes. Aye. I'll send this around for us all to sign. Thank um, you. Okay, uh, Linda, Linda Sheets. You are next, my friend. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. I um, skipped public comment. I'm sorry, you guys. No, you did. We did public comment. There wasn't any. There wasn't any. Gosh, I was expecting there must be some. Why are all these people here? But I know why. Okay, Linda, your turn. We're ready for you to talk about the swim access. Come on up. Yeah. Okay. So Linda is here at, based on a conversation we had in the fall where Linda said, could we please have a swim railing? And we said, sure, can you do the legwork to make that happen? And she did. Oh, so there's a picture there. Of, yeah, I have it, Linda. Oh, you have it. I've seen it. So that's our railing that the um, Josh did, the man who did this. Okay. So just so you can see the simplicity and the strength of it and going into stone. And so we're, how, how this came about is that I had an injury and never could get into um, Curtis Pond, which I'm an avid swimmer of Curtis Pond this past year, because there was no way I could get in and um, feel safe and get out. And then I found there was many older people like me who also had to find ways to get into Curtis Pond. I mean, number 10 Pond has those issues too. But um, when it came that there could be, uh, so that's, that's how the idea came up. It's like, why can't we have some railings? Well, I think it would help people who are disabled as well. 
exactly. And it may help some kids if we made it simple enough. So and we, we're talking about both the grassy areas and the stone steps in, in that estimate. Right. And um, he is really willing to work with, how, you know, I was thinking maybe we would get together a small group of people who use it. We may need a, a designer, you know, who knows codes, if there's codes. That could be, but we would get somebody like John Cullock, who's here in town, <laughs> you know, once John gets back. I'm just going to, um, I printed a copy, and yeah, um, there, is there's one circulating. Oh, well, I have other ones. There. Yeah, that's great. Here, Linda, take my extra one, too, um, just so people can, more people looking at it faster as it doesn't help, doesn't hurt. Uh, thank you, Rick. Um, so, so, uh, so, so Linda, do you just want to like summarize what we already have in writing, just so we're all like, so everyone can hear. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're actually saying okay. out loud so, what, so, what we are. So on at. the stone steps, um, it's very when you're coming up the steps from the water. There's no place to go if you have a, a injury. You you know you can't. There's no tree. There's nothing to hang on to. And so you don't go that way, so you find other ways to get down, and those are very steep too. So the idea was the first railing would go on the side of the stone steps going up, and um, probably it would have to have a curve around because that, but there would be some way that once you're on the landing of the earth that you can stand on. And so it's a safety issue. It's, it's both. It's an accessibility and a safety. On the grassy area, on the, there's two entrances on the grassy area. You know what I mean when I say grassy area? Okay. Um, that, there's one that has a log by it. That one's going to be just left the way it is. But the one that he talks about is the boat. And that's just because people sometimes bring their kayaks up there. Sometimes they bring their canoe up there. They're not supposed to, but they do it. But that's it's going down into the water, and again, there's nothing to hang on to to get out and in. And, um, and, the, sh and the rock there is very sharp, too, and um, Eric Oberg actually told me that he had a, this is a side, this is a freebie, that he could actually um, make that rock smoother for people to step on. So, I mean, it's not just, I mean, there's other improvements we can do once we can get people in and out of the water safely. So that's what this is all about, and, and asking the town if there's some monies to improve the accessibility of, of Curtis. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's great. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Um, are, I'm going to ask uh, one at a time if there are questions from the board, and then I will turn to um, the citizens who are here and ask if there are questions from the school. Uh, Rick, do you have questions? No, or no, no. What I'd like to see us do is to hear from Linda and the audience talk about the town hall request and go over where we're at with ARPA funding before right. we make a motion for anything. Right. I was. I agree with that. We'll talk about how this could be funded. I don't have any questions. We'll okay. talk about how it could be funded before we actually mm -hmm. vote on it. John, any questions? Yeah, well, no. There, there are a couple mechanisms we could use to fund it, so I just we can talk about it. Yeah, that we'll talk about that we will talk about. Uh, I appreciate that you're interested in this project. So. Well, I love that you brought it up and you did you did the legwork and the research so that all we all we have to do is say, look at this awesome proposal and the work that Linda did, and and then it's you know, really helpful. Kick, yeah, it's really helpful. And, and he is he says that there's, you know, it's like this is the idea, but that can be. It can be adjusted if there's better ideas. Okay. Yeah, and he would incorporate that, but he's willing to do the work, and he's he's good. That's great, Linda. Thank you. Are, are there any questions or comments from folks who are here with us on this? This is on the swim rail, of course. Matt. Yeah, Matt Gardner Morris. Um, a number of years ago, there was talk of uh, putting in a parking area next to Dallas Heises and having a boardwalk run up. 
that would be completely level the whole way. And um, I, I don't know, you know, obviously it might be more expensive and it's a little swampy there, but uh, the idea was that even people with wheelchairs and stuff would have access and it would be flat. Okay. Just, uh, so that was you know, 20, 20 years ago. <laughs> and I don't think uh, it ever went anywhere, but uh, you know, if we really want access for everybody, you know, but, uh, it seems to me that we get away from all the street banks and stuff just by uh, going along the hill, but I'm not sure exactly where the property lines are and that kind of thing. Uh, there is a, a telephone pole right there, but uh, uh, there is an area right there we can hide and have a little block uh, that would go up. Matt, go slower for people who are hearing. Sorry. <laughs> and actually, I remember, I, Mark, I'm not sure Mark can hear you. Matt, can you just come a little bit forward, maybe stand in the little nip between the two? Sure. I can hear. You can hear. So okay. how many years ago, Matt, was this room? Yeah, it was after we built the stone wall. Uh, 1999. Yeah, so it was around. Yeah, but you know, that area going in is entirely a different field than the swim area. I mean, there's not a lot that you can swim. You have to go through all the um, water lilies and everything. Well, that's why you have the boardwalk that would take you out to the same area that's right there. Oh, okay. yeah, actually, Josh talked about doing a ramp into the grassy area, but that was going to be too expensive. But there that were, idea is good one way or the other, but... It's good. It would be substantially more than $4,500 to do it. Mm -hmm. would be right. a walkway like that. Right, right. yeah. Right. I mean, we also have a ground yeah. in there for a parking area and then make it wide enough so you could, you know, have a handicapped vehicle there mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Is it, is it fair for me to say um, not mutually exclusive from what Linda's proposing and short-term, long-term? Yeah, I mean, I think tonight we're going to go long term. Right. Well, I'm yeah. Just saying, this is just giving you a little background. Yeah, so Linda, Linda, Linda suggests a swim rail, and Max says, well, how about we, <laughs> you know. How about a boardwalk? How about a boardwalk? Yeah. Well, no, but actually, Josh, the person who did the estimate, he also said, you know, well, maybe we can get you know, a ramp into the water that people could go into the water. Yeah. So one thing does lead to the other. You know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's not so far off, except you have to get down the hill. And with Don's area, you don't have to go down there. So, but, yeah, so the proposal tonight is for the swim rail, yes or no, just so we can stay a little bit confined. And, you know, we could whiteboard another time, um, um, but, but that's not what we're doing tonight. Cindy? I just was going to clarify um, that it's between Don Heises and the, and the steep back park, so it would really be pretty level. There's a little parking area that you can like, pull out a back in the park. So Cindy, oh, Linda, I'll let you answer the question because I'm... I, well, so I mean, it, it isn't a question. I'm just clarifying that it's yes. not... It's between Don Heises, um, like little shed he has there and the, the bank park. It's not in front of Don's house or anything like that. Like that. Oh, it's not where they It's not across the dam or any of that. No, it's not where people conjugate then. That's not what you're talking about. I, I'm not sure where people conjugate, but... Um, no, people congregate. But this is... That's verb. But it's not a problem. So I think, yeah. I mean, I think what we're talking about tonight is just this yeah, handrail thing. But it's a really interesting idea. I like that idea. And so the idea of a ramp... Um, when you, where you're talking about, that wasn't practical. Because building steps would not have let my mother get into the pond after she had her stroke. Mm -hmm. Years later, she might have been able to. But going down steps was completely impossible for her. Well, that's why the grassy area, that's where we have two handrails. One is where there's no steps. Yeah. And the other is on the steps. Are there other questions uh, or comments on the handrails? Jamie? I just want to say I fully support this. and. Thank you for working on it, and thank you for bringing it. Um, I've done home care work with a lot of different clients over the last 10 or 15 years, and I've had several who, if that railing had been there, I probably would have taken them swimming regularly. And we couldn't swim in Curtis, so we had to go to other ponds that had easier access. So I think this is a, a great thing that a lot of people would benefit from. Thank you. Any other questions or comments before we bring it back to talk about funding? I just want to thank Linda for all the hard work, and I think it's great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Mark, I'm sorry you're sick. Yeah, well. So is he. So far, not too much in the way of symptoms, although it seems to be getting worse. 
Thanks, so and thank, yeah, thanks for not Sorry. being here, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm not there breathing on you. Okay. So are we. So Denise, Denise, you want to talk about the the thought of using some some ARPA funds for this proposal? Right. She wants to. I wanted to bring up the friends request and then go back to where we're at with funding. Right. Okay. So, so we're going to we're going to and then Davis. Yep. Yeah, we're going to interject an ARPA update. Um, right, because the ARP update is contingent on, on us being able to grant these requests. <coughs> so, so, right. So I'm going to leave, right? From, yeah, from, you can. I, but you. I, I just want us to say thank you for being on the select board for all the years that you all have done. This is your last meeting. How many years have you been on? Just two. Two? Yes, yeah. Denise? I've lost count. It's either 18 or 20. Okay. Sharon, six? It's six, but you know Denise is being Denise is being humble. I counted one time, and she's over twenty years. Twenty years. years. You're absolutely. You're up to twenty years. Twenty three or twenty five is my guess. Really? Eighteen. I didn't even. I had no idea. I lost count. Yeah. Twenty three. Mark, how long? I don't. I think one and a half or two. Well, yeah. thank you. No, Denise has been on for 20, 23 or 25. I, Rose, you, I looked at it with you one time. Where you, you were there when we got our stone quarry permit in 99. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's right, I was. Yeah. And before that even. Yeah. My head's going to explode with all the knowledge. Yes, right. <laughs> Don't let it out, Denise. Keep it in there. Uh, Is this one of the appropriate to clap and say thank you all for doing that? If you want, go ahead. <laughs> We might, at different points and through the rest of the meeting, ask if you'd like to clap again. <laughs> right. Clapping is always welcome. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so where town, were we? ARPA funds. Okay. Town hall. Um, the town hall friends are requesting five thousand dollars to go toward upgrades to the upstairs of the building. Um, they've done some work in. Uh, preliminary estimates to renovate the upstairs and convert it into a year-round space suitable for municipal and non-municipal activities are in excess of $60,000. This does not include the purchase and installation of sound and light equipment for which the friends have already secured funding. Um, so they're look. I mean, they're asking for a very minimal amount. Um, it would be used to help offset the cost of inst inst installing insulation upgrading the heating, electrical wiring to meet current code standards, painting the room, and putting in seal ceiling tiles for sound absorption. So, that's what... That's Artie oh. and me. Oh, you're, Artie's here, okay. And, oh, and, and me. And you. Right. Artie, come. David. Hey. Forward. Oh, here. Wait a minute. Here. <laughs> Can I can I just um, make one note of caution, which is oh we did we do have it on here. I was going to say it's not worn, but it is. Never mind. Carry on. So we um, upon discuss, I believe Cliff Emmons, who is our chair, yeah, um, submitted the letter that you're reading from, and. In a conversation with you yesterday, um, we're Saturday. He he's submitted a new request. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Right. So, your first request didn't have an amount or what it would be used for towards. So now okay. we just submitted one today at like one o'clock or two o'clock. Right. For five thousand, mm -hmm. and that would be from that same list. In other words, what we believe roughly will cost 60000 um, we would just determine what the most, um, what the quickest thing, or the most urgent thing for $5,000 would be, which I'm not sure we can answer that question well, we can. today. I mean, we, so okay. we, we've generated through donations enough money to um, install um, good lighting, good sound systems, um, things to make it a real theater, but it doesn't address the situation of it's still only a three-season space. 
So we thought with the SARP money, we were requesting a larger amount initially, which would be towards um, putting a heater in the space upstairs, uh, possibly doing some sound proofing um, in the room, which is uh, a problem, um, and making it a usable four season space. Well, when I talk, yeah, because when I talked to Cliff, it was kind of like the ARPA money should be used for the building that's going to be carried on into the future, like insulation, Correct. heating, right. not stuff for plays or um, things like that. The money should be used because it's town, municipal. Our, yeah, right. municipal use right. to make the municipal use better, right. and more. And there available. are a number of people who would love to see town meeting come back. Yeah, I, I think we've everybody been reading would. This. Everybody um, would. And that is <coughs> so municipal and non-municipal use of the upstairs. Right. Depends on insulation. Right. And heat uh, being restored. I mean, once there was a wood stove up there. Uh, the wood stove is no longer there. There was a wood stove here right. until right. very recently. So we've taken we've taken care of the downstairs, but we have done very little to the upper floor and it would be a mistake in our opinion for us to go forward with all of the lighting and the sound uh, systems that are necessary for using the space without getting the insulation, the ceiling, all of these things are pretty basic to ongoing use upstairs and if we don't take care of that then we're not. Then it would be a mistake to go forward with all of the, the sound equipment, equipment really. the right. ready because to we install. install. A lot of the sound and light equipment gets attached to the walls, to the ceiling stuff. So we thought we'd hold off, see about the art funds before we went on with that project. So I'm going to stop you guys there because I thank you very much. That's really helpful, um, and I want to circle back just to the numbers because I'm noticing that. Um, Did you print out the spreadsheets? Is this the right one? Um, yeah, so, so what I wanted to say is, in order for us to approve the handrails and the Friends of Town Hall request, we've got to make some cuts. Well, yeah, and also we were negligent in voting $100,000 for the Curtis Pond Association because we didn't have enough money left to do it. Well, we knew. No, we didn't. We did not because we had already approved um, the traffic study we approved well before January 23rd. So with the, the traffic study we approved and we approved use of ARPA funds before the 23rd of January. Right. And so now we are stuck in a position where when we approved on the 23rd of January, if that date's correct, we, we then we went past our budget. Before that we were doing fine. Well, the traffic study, um, I spoke with Rick about it and I was going to bring it up tonight. It's not really something we have to do. But there, none of these yeah. things are things we have so, to do. So, right. But if there's one project that we don't need to do, it could be the traffic study. That was just my suggestion. Well, the, yeah, I, I would say on the traffic study, the best thing to do is not to do a big general town-wide. The way these, these are scoping studies, and they're usually project-oriented. It's better for us to just work on getting our traffic data. data. We'll use the science we've got identify our spots where we have problems and you actually do these studies in very localized areas. So the, the, so the night that we approved that, that, that was a great idea. That was a great thing for us to be spending money on and we voted we voted to do it and we voted to spend 30000 of our money doing it and now all of a sudden it's a bad use of our Well, I brought that I up that night. I didn't say it's a bad use. It, but well, I said, you know, that was... The, 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 a traffic study, there's funding through grants through CVRPC. Um, or we could cut the, I don't know that $30,000, that seems like a lot of money to me for a traffic study. So the, the question is, if we um, do the, we could do one or the other or part of the ARPA funds for the railings and town um, friends not the, we could, not the whole we, amount. Could, we could cut the money for the invasive species study that we don't have to do. I'm, I'm, I'm just being provocative. I don't think that's a good idea either. I don't really want to do it. I'm just 
frustrated that we didn't that we had that we didn't have accurate numbers in front of us when we approved a hundred thousand dollars for the Curtis Pond mm -hmm. Association because that's that was the point in time at which we went over our entire budget. We were fine until How far that. Are we? we are if you if you take out the third if you assume as Denise has done that we're not going to fund the traffic study no, after I didn't all. assume I just suggested well, just, just, just it suggestion. off and put it in the okay. okay then when, with that on the table then there's 4000 left there's only 4000 left if we approve the hand the handrails which we had talked about but it hadn't seen a number before and the the friends of town hall proposal which is a new one so until with those two things not in, um, when we hang on four seven four seven uh, four seven five four eight five eight five, but we add back in ninety five hundred, um, and we add back in thirty thousand dollars. Um, I did something wrong there. Nope. Okay, help me down here. Four seven five. Thirty thirty nine five. Four eight five plus ninety five hundred yeah. plus thirty thousand. Yeah. So then, after after we had approved everything before tonight, we were at five fourteen nine eight five, out where we actually only had four seventy nine five ninety and thirty six cents. So we were $35,000 over once we approved 100000 for the Curtis Pond Association. Right. So, so this eliminating traffic study, we're still, we're still fine. Well, we are eliminating the traffic study. And if we, if we do that, was just a suggestion. Or reduce it. I think we would get rid of it. I, I agree with Denise that the, the regional, the RPCs yeah, re on a regular basis, on an annual basis, they get AOT grant monies to perform those studies. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember voting on that. We absolutely, Old brain syndrome. We absolutely. I went back through all the minutes and checked them. Yeah, I'm, I'm did, sure yeah, I did. We did vote on it. We absolutely voted on sure it. And it was before January 23rd. It was we sometime in the fall. We did it. So why don't we scrap the traffic study? That's not an imperative. It was just something mm -hmm. we thought we had extra dollars, I'm assuming. We right. still have a huge, we have a huge traffic calming traffic. The, the point of that study, and there are three people here, uh, so I'm just going right. to get up on my soapbox. Right. You guys yeah. will get your vote. But the point of that study was to bring better minds than we have to traffic calming design. Oh, it was traffic calming. Traffic oh. calming design. That's what it was about. Okay. It, was, it was about recognizing that all the flashing, remember this now? Yeah, all the flashing lights and all the speed signs you want and speed, are, bumps. and speed bumps is not what makes people slow down. I think we might have done this the same night we said, hang on, let's take a breath on the speed bumps. It's about how do you design the roads visually and otherwise so that people don't feel like they're driving in a, in a, in a straightaway, you right, know? Right. So it was about traffic visual constraints and those kinds traffic of traffic calming that we've talked about over and over and and then you know we said well I don't remember well I, I guess I remember more than most of us do about the conversation but it, it was about putting some money into traffic calming which we had on our agenda yes. for you know right, as a future right. item that's and it right. kept sitting there yep. So how do we get outside of that? Well, we've got some money here. Well, you know, the, the other thing I was going to suggest, just come back to this, is that uh, the budgetary items being brought up by David and Artie and Linda, they can all be voted. We can, we propose a budget to right. the voters. It's our best guess. Budgets are our best guess, folks. Mm -hmm. We might come out short, often do, during crazy times like right now. Um, but there are best guess at what it's going to cost to run the town, prospectively, and we can get close, but we don't always get it right, and we generally don't. Um, well, so, but the voters, at the end of the day, it's up to them to approve the budget, and they can do the line item veto from the floor. It's the wonderful thing about town meeting. Um, 
And so another course would be for, it's too late for us to amend the budget that's already been warned, but it can, you know, be proposed on the floor of town meeting to amend the budget to include these two items. I don't think it's a big heavy lift. I think it would be, I'm conjecturing, but I think it would be very well supported by the folks on the floor. So. Well, and, you know, these requests came in right at the end of when we had put in for the money, except for Well, we goofed up on Linda's. That's not true. Linda, we goofed up. Well, we goofed up. No, you, you were the. Yeah, we goofed, we goofed. We should have had you come back in time for us to have your number for the budget. I did that when I was told to. Yeah, yeah. you did. Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah. That's You're not very true. obedient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, we, and, the, and, and in terms of actually, in terms of actually getting ahead of summer, February was great. It's not great in terms of having a budget number. So, so I mean, the first problem we have is that we're over on our, um, we're over. What we've approved so far, and I don't know, I, the dates are not correct because we didn't even have a meeting on January 23rd. So, I, I got the, I think I got the minutes for that. Um, I think we met on the 25th. No, it's like having a credit card. We went a little wild and on the shopping spree. We overspent. Folks. We. Uh, Oh, it was the 23rd, so that means that the, the 25th and the minutes, is that's the wrong date earlier, but that's a detail. So, so, that is, so that to me is the first problem, is that we are over on our, as we stand now, without, you know, without this conversation, we are over on our ARPA funds. And so that's the first conversation this, uh, this board or a board needs to have, is how do we Bring bring it back in line, which I didn't bring my calculator. What if we leave the take the Curtis Pond and the Friends out? Where are we at? Five what? We were already with everything we've already approved. We are already four hundred five hundred fourteen thousand nine hundred eighty five dollars um, allocated, which is thirty five thousand three hundred ninety four dollars and sixty four cents over what we actually have to spend. How much? $35,394.64 over. And so what we, so the only thing we would be positioned to do is actually take some things off pursuant to a vote, which we did not warn. Right. So I am going to say we don't, we can't take any vote to reduce and we're gonna to have to leave that for another meeting to decide how do you bring um, $514,985 down to 479, not 596 cents. Right. That's where we are. Well, well and, and also th this is just the current board's position on how ARPA money should be spent. Right. So that there, gives the a, that incoming gives, board has a flexibility post town meeting to unless, adjust these numbers. Unless right. we want to do a special meeting between now and, and then, or we, or, or we can just mm -hmm. say, you know, I was going to You're welcome. We gave you a chance to revisit the ARPA allocations. Well, we yeah, could well, do that. No we, could, we could continue to, I don't know what everybody's schedule is tomorrow night. You know, I think it's best to do it after town meeting because if the bond issue doesn't pass, then yep. there won't be a problem. If it does, there will. The new board can deal with it. Yep. I kind of agree with that. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Well, I honestly do. And for the new board's sake, I mean, the traffic study really can. But their alternative funding sources that Let's, is, but it's not traffic. So it's not a, I, apparently yeah, I know what traffic way. study means, but it, it was a road design for traffic calming. It was a traffic yeah. calming mm -hmm. road design initiative. Yeah, yeah but that's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's, oh, right. that's fine. It's just, a just, scoping, be, yeah. But that I just I understand Rick and I'm clarifying so, because apparently it was lost in translation. So if we're not gonna meet as Mark suggests, I'm I'm gonna tell you folks as a member of the the uh, electorate at town meeting, I, I'm going to move that we fund these two items from the floor by adjusting the budget and cure most of this problem, but it won't cure all of it. Doesn't the, cure it all. Yeah. We can leave the rest, you know, the, the $5,000 discrepancy plus or minus um, for the next select board to make adjustments to. Well, and the next select board is going to be responsible for the funds. Right. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. You know, which you know actually is authority they have you anyway to 
yep. change our minds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well that was fun. <laughs> so there'll be a discussion uh, of the budget yeah. in town meeting. It'll be back and forth, and um, Gus will be moderating. We hope that's the plan. Um, and you know, you can raise your hand and say this. This is what, or I can. Anyone can. Because I'm going to be in the kitchen. You're going to be in the kitchen. Well. David Sheets could do it. He's not going to. He's going to be in the kitchen too. Mm -hmm. uh, David's going to. Well, it's all right. I'll, I'll figure I'll, it out. I can raise the rail we'll thing and I can out. explain what happened here. Any member of okay. anybody, the anybody can do it. And 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 anybody, if you want some help writing what the motion would look like, and I think that's true for anybody. If you want to raise something at town meeting, um, people who. Lots of people are available to help write the motion. We are, as a select board, are not going to make the motion, but yeah, we'll expect gotcha. it coming. So, um, Sage, I'll take your question and then we're going to move on because I think Sharon, I'm sorry. I know I'm taking up David and Arnie's time, but no, no. you guys went on a where, um, so I was remarkably here where Linda asked for the railing. It felt humble and mm -hmm. easy. And now they're, so that's ARPA ARPA. What? ARPA. ARPA. Yes, I love saying all the letters. <laughs> and so now there's also the at town hall was 16. But I was hearing the traffic study for 30, which we have had some traffic studies in some parts. and. Is that scrapped? Are you going for that? So, so Sage, let me just recap. Where and then, we... like, I just felt like I heard that you had overspent, and actually, Curse Pond does not have the one hundred that was promised. And so, so let me. Good, no, 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 I'm it's okay. This let is me, a wish list. Let this me clarify. Okay. We have, we have Sorry, not, Sharon. No, we have not overspent at all. Um, that's the good news. We have merely in our enthusiasm for all of the great ideas, we right. have overpromised. Okay. That's what we've done. Okay. Overpromised, not overspent. Okay. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm it might be better if we spent the money and then had to go find that some. humble traffic study that's been probably on for a really long Absolutely, time. Absolutely, which so is why we thank you for advocating for it. So yes. No sense. So of the, this is brought up at town meeting and we we as the French group make an ask at town meeting. Is that then decided then, or you had said there's something about the future select board also has some. So, so yeah, so let's break that out. So the 470, the ARPA funds are $479,590.36. Have we spent any of that yet? The, um, yes, the amount that we have spent, Actually is, spent. is for CD fiber. Okay. And the removable highway signs that we approved 55,000 for, and the invoice came in at forty nine five. So we have so these other ones have been, um, you know, put in the works. Right. And like I said, you know, the new select board can do whatever they want. They can get all new with requests. what remains. Right. So mm -hmm. so let me answer Artie's question. So so we have spent of the four hundred seventy nine thousand five hundred ninety dollars and thirty six cents. We have spent. Two hundred forty-nine thousand five hundred and twenty-two dollars, leaving the remainder, whatever it is, to which we have allocated and promised. That's the over-promising. We've promised more than we have left in the bucket. Um, that money is separate from what happens at town meeting. So, any motions made and to increase the budget for particular purposes at town meeting that pass. Um, are outside of the ARPA funds and they just get added to the town budget for the ensuing budget year which begins July 1 and it doesn't mean the select board has to spend that money but you're set up very nicely if you raise it and it gets approved. Okay, so even at town meeting, so it's not definitive at town meeting if it, no, if it, it gets is. approved. It's pretty, it's pretty, I mean. It's in the budget. It's in the budget. And it's, it's, it's 
it's identified for that for those projects, and they can only be used for those projects. Okay. If the projects cost less, we don't have to spend right. it. Right? Okay. So in preparation for that, what what do we do to bring that up at town meetings or things that we need to put in? Say I'd like, <coughs> I'd like to make a, town I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Mr. Moderator. I'd like yeah. to make a motion okay. of amendment to the town budget as follows. It's under the article. You could do it as a two-part. Denise will tell us she has a, the report. Um, where we're bo voting on the town budget, which includes highway and general government, that item is where we vote to more money for the food shelf, more money for circle, less money for okay. other things. Yeah. yeah, so it would be under starting article four is where we vote the highway and general fund. But for special articles, that we do every year, which is all the, you know, two hundred and whatever dollar ones. That's Article Seven. Um, so you would do it sometime, you know, around there. Okay. Under Article Seven, right? We want to vote Article Seven as amended. Well, you could do that under Article Seven, or it could just be a separate article. Or it can be separate. Okay. So, all right. So, so you. Raise your hand, you get recognized, you make the motion, you're looking for a second. Maybe Mr. Sheets would second it from the kitchen with the spatula. No, and then not. and then there's there's discussion and then there's the vote. Okay. okay. I'm gonna move us along, guys. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank you. for the Thank questions. You. Um, the next item is uh, is there well let me give no, I don't even I don't think this needs any explanation. Um, is there a motion to appoint Denise and John to continue as liaisons to the CPA dam project until a new board appoints a liaison or liaisons? I would make that motion. I'll second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Mark, did you vote? Yes, aye. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Now we are going to talk about the curb cut ordinance. Um, which I think I brought. I hope I brought. Well, anybody's doing that. Can people sign this town title seven more, please? Okay. Uh, yes. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. What would you get? John, that's for you. Uh, so, hey guys in the corner. We're going to carry on. It's a, it, believe it or not, it gets a little hard to focus when there's other conversation. Okay. Uh, so the next topic is the is the curb cut ordinance. Um, we're doing not too much time. Um, so this is an item as as we explained at our last meeting that we have had on our future items for a while. Um, I think we might have talked about it. We have talked about curb cuts at different points um, in the context of improving our processes around them. And the conservation, and we actually did have a proposed, um, some, some, a form that went with them. The conservation committee uh, noticed that we were get, that we were, ready to, getting ready to work on it and asked if they could um, propose, propose some, have, offer some input. And we of course said yes because one of the things we really like to do is delegate to other people with some expertise. And so Stephanie and the Conservation Commission uh, did a lot of work on a an ordinance for us and then let us know that they were ready to present it. Um, I think it was two meetings ago, Stephanie, you let us know that you were ready, that you were ready, you presented it at the last meeting. So this is the third meeting um, where we've had some substantive conversation about a curb cut ordinance. And by the way, we already have an ordinance. Our current curb cut ordinance is on the website. If you've had a chance to look at it, you know it's out there. It's 19 years old. It is grossly out of date. So we already have a curb cut ordinance for anybody who's worried that this is a new ordinance. It's, yeah, not. it's not. This is an update to an existing one. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to ask the board, uh, maybe Stephanie, I'm going to ask you if you want to, you spoke with us last time, you've done a lot of work on this. Um, do you have any comments you want to offer before I probably ask folks in the audience if they're here to make comments about this ordinance? Is there anything you want to say, Stephanie, that you didn't say to us last time or the time before? Yeah, I, what I'm saying is... I'm Can you, you want to join us? I've said it before because I've met with you. This is probably the fourth or fifth time that I've met with you about this curb cut ordinance as it was being developed and as it was finished. Um, that um, I've explained this. It's, it's more than the ordinance that is, exists now, the 19-year-old one. It's as far as I... I'm concerned it's much clearer. It's got a process in there that is clear to everybody. What the standards are is clear. And um, not only did, it, it's not just because we did a lot of work. You know, we did a lot of work. I did a lot of work. The Conservation Commission did a lot of work. The town attorney did. The town attorney's associate. You guys did. But it's not just that a lot of work was done. It's because it's a really good ordinance. You know, it's well, really good. It's a good ordinance because a lot of work was done. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it should be, um, in my opinion, it, it should be adopted. And then it will be adopted. And then, you know, you all know what the process is for adopting ordinances. You know, there's a certain period of time people, petition can object to it. Right. The, so, so, so I'm just going to amplify your point. Um, the f the first step of an ordinance becoming fully, fully um, entrenched as town law, the first step is for a select board to endorse it. Okay, I'm Stephanie. I am going to ask if other people want to make comments. And then the other thing I forgot to mention is that we have an attorney client uh, privilege memo communication from our attorney. The board is going to go into executive session for a few minutes to talk about that as it relates to this uh, proposed ordinance. So, Stephanie, thank you. Um, notwithstanding your point that it's not because it's hard work, I do want to thank you and the, and the commission for the hard work because I, it's, it's an impressive, thorough document that you've presented to us. So one other thing I wanted to say is that last time I met with you two weeks ago and we were talking about the ordinance, and I think you were actually ready to vote for it, but it, what it was missing was an opportunity for the public to participate, interested, per, not the public, but people who have a legal interest, that is. Not, not, not in adopting the ordinance, it wasn't fully reflected in that's the That's in there now. Yeah. And, and, and that's also, Joe uh, McLean, the town attorney, wrote that, and, yeah. he, and he put that in, an opportunity, and as you know, he did that because there had been a case where there was no clear process and uh, somebody appealed the curb cut permit that had been issued by a select board. And it went to the court, and there was all this brouhaha in the court, and the court determined, yes, it was quasi-judicial, which means it's appealable, but there should be a process. Which we don't, by the way, have in our current ordinance. So that's, that is, yeah, that's it. Exactly. exactly. There's, There's no process. process in there at all. It doesn't even say who the application goes to. Right. Well, the so, public process is a huge improvement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that, yeah, Stephanie, thank you. I do want to make sure that we have time to hear from some other folks. No, absolutely. I just wanted yeah. to make sure that's that, the one piece that you didn't review before. Right, right. Okay. So, so in, inside the ordinance is now language that recognizes that a, a curb cut where it's positioned and other things relating to it is something that the, the neighbors, if you will, um, should have an opportunity to, to be... If they have an interest, if they, yeah. they can prove well, that there's an effect on them, a personal effect on them from it. And I just also wanted to say one more thing, that it's, there are lots of curb cut ordinances issued, as you know, I mean, curb cut permits issued, as you know, because you issue them. Very, very few would ever become controversial. Right. Okay. So, right. you know, it's not and like it's going to be a big deal every time. It's just that it's a clear process that's set out with standards so everybody knows what it is they have to comply with. Right. Couldn't be Denise, do you have a clarifying question yeah. for and the and the new this new ordinance with the public notification also requires <coughs> adjoiners, adjacent property owners to be notified. Yes. Which we didn't have before. So that's it's a good it's, point. A, it's a better exactly. it's a way better public 
more process, there's more transparency. Okay, thank you. So I, I just need a clarification. So the posted ordinance now on our website is the one that we would vote on tonight. The, the, this one. The one that we got on. Yeah, Jamie posted it. 23rd, I guess we got it. No, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the 23rd. I emailed it around to everybody and then Jamie put it on the website. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I do want to make sure that, that anybody who has a comment or a question has a chance to offer it. Yes. Um, yes. Are there others who want to make any notes? Uh, that's actually, that's a good that's a good question. How many people want to speak on the curb cut ordinance? Jamie. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay, if I say. Yes. Please do. <coughs> um, okay. I'm All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I recognize you. Thank you, Richard. Um, and I want to begin by echoing the thanks that you heard earlier. Um, you know, it's a lot of work being on this life board, and you all have dedicated a ton of your time to the town, and I really appreciate it. I think you deserve to be applauded for that, as you were earlier tonight, and um, I just want to start by saying that. I also have to say, I don't, I really don't want to be here right now, because I know that a lot of terrific people put a lot of time into trying to write this ordinance. And I think it still needs a lot of work, and I think you should not pass it tonight. You should uh, take more public comment and make some improvements to it and uh, table it for tonight. That's my recommendation. What areas need work, Richard? So the first thing I want to say is that the first time this ordinance in its present form was made available to the public was last night. It was not posted on Saturday, I checked. It was posted yesterday. So it's really only been available to the public for one day. And you all have heard that this is an important ordinance. It makes important changes. And it makes changes that affect the development rights or the, you know, the property rights of every landowner in town. Because you know, getting a curb cut is essential to building anything. And this ordinance says you have to go through this process for any change of use. And it, any change of use, I'm not sure what that means because it's not defined. If you want to put an in-law apartment on your house that's increasing or changing the use of your driveway and therefore your curb cut. If you want to build a barn in the back acres, um, you now have an agricultural use that is being added to your driveway. And the ordinance says explicitly that a change from commercial to residential but is a change in use. But it says any change of use, including, but not limited to. So we don't know what triggers this ordinance. We do know that, in some respects, it's overly inclusive. It says, basically, if you want to take a load of gravel and put it on your driveway, you have to get this permit. And the permit requires a process, which might be appropriate for a major development, but it's certainly not appropriate for putting an ADU on a house, or building a barn, or putting gravel on your driveway. 45 days advance notice, three different people come and look at your driveway, they debate to tell you whether you can do it or not. And the select board has to sign off on your load of gravel. Just, just to be clear, it, I'm working with you, Rich. Um, it's only where it enters the right of way at that point. It's well, not you working on your driveway in the back 40. It's at that access right. point. I, I, That's what we're regulating, the access point. Just so okay, you, I want to be yeah, clear. Yeah. I want to be clear about the next point. 
okay. which is the point you made. Uh, it's unclear from reading this ordinance actually the physical territory that it applies to. Because it's the the ordinance clearly discusses the access, but then it also discusses something called the approach. And it doesn't define approach except to say it's the land nearby. And then later it uh, refers to uh, the adjacent land. And I actually don't know, and I asked myself the question. So, so just so there's some history here, just so you have the, the benefit of history, and you know this, but um, our first curb cut, or one of the iterations after our first curb cut, um, the, the, actually at the, ad, at the um, advocacy of our road commissioner or road commissioners, they requested that the approach yeah. to the curb cut be more or less level within a certain percent grade because we had right. folks requesting driveways that came in and that's a safety issue in the winter, of course, icy times, but it's also a drainage issue. It's harder to control the drainage into the road. Um, in fact, we had a problem over by number 10 pond and we were assured by the engineers and this, some of this is born out of that experience engineers assured us that everything would be good, trust us. We didn't have the teeth to say in a curb cut permit, no, no, this is what you need to do. And we did try to, um, but uh, we had a major water quality violation. The state came out and threatened to enforce. We had dirt and soil running right down that hill, right into number 10 pond. So, that, so that's just saying that this didn't inform I, I, you any better. Believe me, I'm, I can appreciate <clears throat> Yeah. I, I'm the land use planner. I used yeah. to teach land use law. I've read a lot of curb cut ordinances. Many of them define what is the approach. This ordinance doesn't, except to say it's the land somehow nearby. Did you um, bring did you bring some language that you've seen in other ordinances for us to I, consider? I did not. I only saw this ordinance for the first time yesterday. Well that language was there from the beginning. The, well, but I that, guess that I, particular language. The ordinance that was presented to you at the select board was never posted on the town website, nor was it ever posted in the minutes of the Conservation Commission. And I checked the minutes going back to, April, to August to see whether I could get a hold of the language that was under consideration because I thought maybe I could help. Yeah. And um, it was never posted. So the first one that was actually posted for the public was uh, posted yesterday. So uh, to continue, the other serious concern that I just want to alert, alert you to is that um, I think the standards that an ordinance should have are actually not here. Um, some of them are, some of them aren't. There's, there's a reference to the state of Vermont um, high driveway standards or something like that. It's B71. Those are site distance standards. A76. Yeah. Okay, those are for Four site, site distance. Yeah. yeah. So for, it's, and, and I want to be really clear that I am very strongly support a good ordinance that would affect <coughs> public safety and the site distance, many ordinances are very clear about site distance and they don't have these, a lot of these other issues uh, addressed in them. Um, the part that's not clear is the, the part about this ordinance that says that the applicant is responsible for filling out an application that um, identifies within some <coughs> undefined proximity all of the natural and historic resources that could be affected by the uh, curb cut. And there is reference to the town plan, and there is reference to the um, Agency of Natural Resources maps, but I, I have gone and checked those maps, and I can tell you that what they are is an inventory of pretty much everything under the sun. 
And you can click on a parcel or your neighbor's parcel and a big blob of color will come up on the map to say, oh, this is an aquifer recharge area. This is a something else. This is a large standard forest. Um, this is, well, uh, this is a wildlife connectivity block, some of which are really big. And so it's easy, you know, to, to sort of click on all those things and say, well, the land in some ill-defined proximity to my curb cut has different resources. And I don't know what that tells you for, the, for trying to figure out, is this curb cut like reasonable and sensible? Um, I mean, the ordinance to it is, you know, on the good side, it, it now, instead of saying adverse effect, no adverse effect, it says no undue adverse effect. But the, the maps that the ordinance directs the applicant to look at are really broad, and there are so many different resources mapped there, it's like almost impossible to know. Well, what am I supposed to do with this information? You know, can I put a curb cut where there's trees or not? Can I put a curb cut where there's grass or not? What if there's a stone wall or not? There's so much discussion baked into this that I have concerns that you're going to end up with numerous controversies over Somebody wanting to just put in a curb cut so they can build a house. And somebody else saying, well, sorry, you can't have a curb cut in that location because of some natural resource that they would like to protect. And the, the standards in, in this part of the ordinance are very unclear and they're highly discretionary. And I actually read the minutes of the Conservation Commission at one point where they were discussing this and, and somebody said, well, shouldn't we have some performance standards? And somebody else said, well, no, it's going to be case by case decision made. So my, I'm going to go back to the beginning here and say, I admire the terrific people on the Conservation Commission. I think they're trying to do the right thing. I think this ordinance is too complicated, um, too inclusive, and too vague for you to adopt it right away. When you say inclusive, do you mean the public inclusive? No, not, not I mean, it, this, oh, maybe I should get back to the conversation about gravel on the driveway. Um, it's not, I, 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 it's not clear from the text of the ordinance that all that's being regulated is the access way and maybe the approach. Because the approach isn't really defined, but it could be fixed. You could fix that. Say the approach is you know, the 50 feet before the access or something like that. Um, but the way this ordinance is written, it seems to me that if um, it seems to me that someone could object not just to the location of the exact curb cut, but to the driveway. I see the language you're talking about. Under section four, number two. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. one is it, John? Section four, number two, regrading or resurfacing any driveway, comma, entrance, or approach. I mean, if it said driveway entrance, if I struck the comma, any driveway entrance or approach, that would make it give but, a totally different meaning than what Richard is concerned about. So, really all I'm saying is I think it needs a careful scrub. And if you mean that this ordinance is only going to be restricting or regulating the 
25 feet closest to the road. That's what curb cuts are supposed to regulate. If, if that's what you mean, then it should say that. It doesn't say that. So if we said, for instance, revised it to say, regrading or resurfacing any driveway entrance or approach within 25 feet of the access point to the public highway, um, that would... That helps, and if, and if your intent is clear, that it isn't, I mean, think about the connections between things. You get a curb cut because you want a driveway. The driveway goes somewhere. Do you want to enable this ordinance to be the kind of bootstrap where somebody says, well, I don't like where you're going to put your house, so therefore I'm going to... Right. That, that should be the zoning. Okay. Right. I mean, that should be the zoning. The curb cut is only for the curb cut. Okay. We don't have anything to do with the driveway. That's zoning. I, I agree with you. It should only be that. Unfortunately, the English language of two as it written is to the contrary. When there is a list of items divided by semicolons, each semicolon is read by itself. Right. The first semicolon says, regating or resurfacing any driveway entrance or approach. So someone 100 feet up, the plain meaning of the language is what would bind a court. It's the entire driveway. Then it says, or building a fence or building where? Anywhere, I guess semicolon, or depositing or discharging material of any kind within a highway right of way, a normal court will say, yeah. since the third item says within a highway right of way, and they could have said it in the first two but didn't, the first two are not limited. That would be normal statutory construction. John, et cetera, if you want to limit it to close to the highway right of way, you would have to completely rewrite this section. Right, no, and that can be done very easily. Right, and approach can easily be edited to say that the approach means the land. Are, are you looking at the statute, the state statute language? No, we're looking, no, we're looking at, at your... It comes right out of the state statute. The, this regrading talks about item two under permit required, section that four. Literally four. The that... statute says driveway entrances, highway bridge. It shall be unlawful to develop, construct, regrade, or resurface any driveway, entrance, or approach, or build a fence or building, or deposit material of any kind within, or to in any way affect the grade of a highway right of way. It goes, this is a ridiculous sentence. Right. Or obstruct a ditch, blah, 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 basically without a permit. So right. that language comes right out right, of the Right, right, but we, we have another ordinance that deals with that. Yeah. You know, we have the highway right of way ordinance. Right. So this is we don't overlapping know. with that you know, and develop that with you, I think. Wait, well, hang on. Saying, it's um, coming right out of the state so, so, so that, so that. I understand, uh, but that, yeah. that seems to uh, join two different ordinance areas, regulatory areas into one, and that creates confusion. It, it creates, this is a, well, let's, let's, we let's, let's hang that. on. Let's, let's just, um, Richard, thank you. I'm gonna ask if anybody else has comments that they wanna make. Okay, uh, Richard, thank you very much. Thanks, Rich. Uh, Rich, Matt, Phil. Oh, I think Jamie no, was Jamie first. was first. Oh, Jamie, okay, come on. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, I wanted to just first quickly clarify and apologize for the posting on the website. Um, if I received this ordinance and the traffic ordinance on the same day about five days ago, I posted them both on the calendar event for this meeting and on the ordinance page. And then I also made a public notice for each one and I put the wrong link to the wrong one. So the traffic one was under the curb cut and the curb cut one was under the traffic. Mm -hmm. So they were on the website, but there was confusion as to right. access. Yeah, so all I mistakes. apologize for that. We all make mistakes. Yeah. Um, the comment I wanted to make on the ordinance, which um, is on the, the resurfacing grading um, of a driveway, my only concern is, you know, we put, just for myself, I have 
the Westons come every couple of years and put a load of gravel on a section of my driveway. And I know that they do, I don't know how many, 25, 30 plus driveways in Callis every summer. And if every one of those driveways that they spread any material or redo the, the grade of the driveway, you know, that's 30, 35 people a year who get potholes touched up on their driveway who have to go through this whole process. I, I, I support the, I support it in general and that to me seems like it's a lot of work for the property owners and a lot of work for the select board and the conservation commission that um, I'm not sure why that needs to be included. No, that's not supposed to be. Well, but apparently it comes from state law, so that's super right. confusing. Yeah, right. but, yeah but, but there's to con conjoin, we, is that the word? We're conjoining two areas that we've broken out regulatorily right. in this town. We have so a curb like, cut ordinance and we have a highway right, right of way ordinance right. where you apply for a right. permit. So if you want to build a fence in a highway right of way, that was the genesis of this, or plant a hedgerow within right. the highway right of way, you need to get Absolutely. a permission to do that. That's that's what that area of statute talks exactly. about. Right, and they're, they're, very, but, they're but, two very But, the, but right. the, the statute also um, requires that you get permission to, to access a highway. Um, well, right, so so, that, so if I'm understanding, um, actually, I'm going to stop, and I, but I'm going to circle back because I don't want to interrupt. Jamie, go ahead. I I mean I think I'm mostly done. My my question really is, you know, if I call up the Westons and say my driveway was hit hard by mud season. And they say, oh, we had a cancellation tomorrow. We can bring you a load of slate and fix it. Do I have to then go through, do I have to say, no, I have to wait three weeks to go through a curb cut application because some of the potholes are within 100 feet of the road? Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. Yeah. So, so what I, so I think, actually, I'm not going to do this. Mac. Hi, uh, Matt Gardner Morris. I had a similar question to Jamie. I mean, we have a culvert that's half full of silt and stuff because the town never clears out, you know, the drainage. So, do I have to get a town permit, or, you know, a permit, you know, wait 45 days, notify? I have 11 budding landowners, not 11 across the road from me. Do I have to notify all those people, get a permit, just to dig out the ditch and clear my culvert out? And I mean, we replaced the culvert before, and we never got a permit. And I called Doug Willie, but I'm uh, not Doug Willie, the uh, road commissioner, the former road commissioner. <laughs> why, why didn't you call Doug? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should call him. He's going to try to. But he said, you know, you know, it's a hamper. Go ahead and shovel it out. Okay. So I mean, it, it's to me, it's. I mean, we have three log landings. Do I need a permit for every log landing? Every time we're going to put, you know, pull logs off our property. Do I need to get a permit? We have access to our fields for mowing and haying. I mean, I, I've well, got- Those are pre-existing. Right, and those are agricultural, aren't they? So, so well, there's I'm been some questions. I know Nick Emlin applied for a curb cut in this for his short-term logging thing, and I said to the select board, I don't think he needs one. It's exempt, regulatory, but we said, well, Nick's applying for it anyway, let's just grant it. And I think that's a bad precedent, and I don't think it is required. Um, particularly because it's, of its temporary nature, but so, we're kind of learning all the while. Well, so, so Mac, thank you for the question. I'm going to ask Stephanie to um, re. So here's what's going to happen next. I'm going to ask Stephanie a clarifying question or two. Others on the board may want to do that. Then we are going to go into executive session because we have we have um, we have <coughs> attorney client communication. Uh, that we will discuss privately as it relates to the curb cut ordinance and then we will come back out um, and when we go into executive session I think we will retreat so we can go in there. rather than asking all of you to to go outside where it's cold um, we discovered there's a secret hiding highway back there that we can go to 
a few weeks ago. Okay, Stephanie, would you mind rejoining us? Um, I'm just going to keep here so I can hear you better. Yeah, so my understanding is that, in fact, state law does envision everything that's here. Don't let me put words in your mouth and correct me where I'm wrong. Um, and I think, so to the extent that this feels new, it's not really new. It's that it's new for it to be in a curb cut ordinance. And how I have explained this to myself, I'm going to say it out loud in case it's helpful or in case I'm wrong. How I've explained this to myself is it's an opportunity to do exactly what we've been talking about for at least the six years that I've been on the board, which is break down the silos between you know, things that have perhaps historically been thought of as separately, highway maintenance. A lot of people have, have, um, have had the point of view that maintaining the highway has absolutely nothing to do with mowing the invasives. And we have learned otherwise. Of course it has something to do with highway. How we maintain our highways has everything to do with environmental stewardship, which is why we have culvert sizes and all the things that we've accepted as relating to highway because they did that in the 70s. So you know we've all kind of grown up with that. But now there along comes a bunch of new things that relate to the environment. And we're not even making it up. It's already envisioned. It's just envisioned in silos. And silos that are within the town's control. And what the Conservation Commission has done, again, I'm ex this is how I explain it to myself, and I'm putting it out there so people can say, that's wrong, you're just wrong. But is that what this, this conservation has done what we have said as a board that we want to do, which is break down those silos and integrate function in a way that makes sense. And so that's, that's, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it all is entirely clear because we all, anybody, I was going to say, all, there's a bunch of lawyers in the room. Even all the people who are not lawyers also know that statutory language doesn't always make sense. No, um, it doesn't. So Stephanie, am, am I way off base in how I am explaining this to myself? No, in fact, I think that, I don't know if it's a problem, I think it's clear that people have not read the existing ordinance. Because the existing ordinance says things like, any change of use of an existing curb cut, whether previously permitted or not, shall require a curb cut permit. Now, it says that in the existing ordinance. Right. Well, whether it should continue saying that, I don't know. We just lifted it from there and put it in. A lot of this language in here was just lifted from the existing I think, ordinance. Right. I think what you guys did was just elaborate on so that there's a, looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, which Sharon included said, yeah. looking at the, the conservation issues. Well, Breaking break down the silos. use is important because that is, it turns into traffic generation. I mean, that's, that's a really important thing. If there's a change of use on a drive and it's a residential drive, much different than somebody who starts, let's say, a fence business on their property with the houses. They're generating a lot of in and out traffic, so you're, you know, there are issues around that. I do, I do get worried, I mean, somehow we have to be careful. There's like a, a practical, I mean, just as Jamie and Richard said too, there's, we have, I said, I said the last many, meeting, I think we have to have enough specificity. We can't let this turn into an, a NIMBY kind of thing. We've got to really be crisp and clear about what we're regulating and then what those constraints are going to be. And then, you know, that to me is, is the worry. I really believe in this, too. This is, you know, it's one, after spending a lot of years in transportation, we didn't do this well, and you can see it all across our road system. But at the same time, there's a double-edged sword. You have, to, you have to really be careful about how and what you say you're measuring. So there's a degree of fairness, you know, real fairness to this. And, I mean, Jamie's point was a really good one. You know, this can bog down in process. So, how, I mean, how do we navigate that piece? I mean, I, we don't always follow, you know, the 
AASHTO standards in the state. We don't follow the Vermont standards all the time, but what our road standards do in this town, you know, we we really bring them to a level that is appropriate to our, our local needs. So I think here we want to be careful. And I'm not saying that we just allow anything to be done. No, I, I agree with you, but the issue of the clarity. it's not regulating driveways. It's no, regulating no. the access point. Right. It's so access point. if you want to have so, your yeah. driveway resurfaced, that's not affecting your curb cut. Right, but the language, and it wasn't the intent, it's definitely agree, but by just grabbing the language in the statute, which is broader than the curb cut interest here, it, it appears to regulate right up to your door yard. So how would you want that's it? easily fixed. And I, I, just, I, I just fixed it, you know. It's, I was, okay, I was just gonna this ask. This is not impossible. Impossibility Stop. arguments are, that aren't valid here. Right. Um, that's um, easily done. Mark's concern and Rich's concern in that regard are easily addressed. I was gonna invite Stephanie to tinker with it when we go into executive session. Do you want to, well, do, you guys, mean, do you want to share your this language? Is, yeah, or just or share, I mean, I just kind of did what Rich and I just, Rich and Mark and I discussed publicly here. Uh, Rich's larger concern as presented tonight.